Ron Pastor Steve, him as our lay reader for today. Today is Father's Day. And I'm sorry, men, sometimes fathers get a bad rap. <laughs> it seems like there are more good mothers than there are good fathers. I'm blessed. My dad was a great dad. I know Brenda's dad was a great dad. And so, there are a lot of good Christian men out there. And that's who we celebrate this day, the good father. The fathers have spent time with their children, with their grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Do you have any great-great-children? <laughs> Someone in here does, I guarantee it. So, we celebrate you. This is the chapel, glorifying God in worship, service, fellowship, and love. Let us pray. Loving God, our Lord Jesus Christ called you Father, remembering his love for you. We pray today for all human fathers. May they be like Abraham, welcoming you with hospitality and laughter, and receiving in return a legacy of faith for generations to come. May they rely upon your grace as they answer the call of parenting. And may they show to their children the compassion of Jesus Christ, who responds to human suffering and need with limitless love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Our opening hymn is 454. Amen. Open my eyes so that I may see. And just as a word, I don't think there's anything wrong with your eyesight this morning. I think that the <coughs> bulb in the projector is going because it looks a lot weaker to me. So. But we'll make it all work. <laughs> Today is 
is a day of daring. We are ready to accept whatever challenge God presents to us. Let us rejoice and worship the Holy One. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Creator of God, Lord are we and you should take notice of us. Who are we? of assurance. Rejoice. Do not doubt. God has poured love, hope, and forgiveness on you. You are healed and forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we will have the anthem, He Lifted Me.
uplifting choir. Thank you. Prayer for illumination. Teach us your wisdom, O oh Lord, that we may live wisely, not foolishly. Open our minds to understand our place in the world. Amen. The scripture today is Matthew uh, chapter 10, verses 1 and 5 and 8. Jesus sends out the 12. Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or any, enter any town of the Samaritans, rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely given. The word of God for the people of God. on there, Jim said it, but I'm going to say it too. Happy Father's Day to all the men and fathers who are here this morning. Same to you. As I mentioned earlier, fathers don't always get the respect that I think they should. A comedian once observed that boys grow up spending hours with their father, throwing footballs and going to games. And the young man gets away to college. And now he's in a big game. And they're interviewing him. And what's the first thing he says? Hi, Mom! <laughs> <laughs> nah, fathers don't get that much respect anymore. But the news on Father's Day is not bad. The National Center for Fathers conducted Father of the Year essay contest. They partner with local schools and scholarships. School children submit an essay on what my father means to me. Here's some examples. A first grader writes, my dad is a Frito-Lay man. That's an important job because Frito-Lay means chips, which is food. It's so important because you can't live without food. Yay, Frito-Lay man, okay. Third grader writes, the dad in my life isn't really my dad. He's my grandpa but he's been like a father to me before I was born. I hope as I get older, Grandpa will teach me all the stuff he knows about wood, first aid, and everything else he knows about. My Grandpa is not my father, but I wouldn't trade him for all the dads in the world. Fifth grader writes, you know what else my dad does? He braids my hair. I'm the only girl that I know has her dad braid her hair. I think that's perfect, she says. He's already the greatest dad to me. I just wanted everyone to know that. The sixth grader writes, one time we had an assembly and I was a soloist and my dad was in the first row and after the song I smiled at my dad and my dad smiled back and then he started crying. Best thing I ever saw, she said. So you see, the news about dads is not all bad. If you got a Father's Day present, I hope it's something you can use. I chose this tie today because it was a present. But I hope you got something you can use. Because you see, dads, in monetary terms, what can your children give us that we cannot purchase for ourselves? In a society so affluent as ours, it's really a challenge to give anybody something they really need. What do you give to somebody who has everything? Now, I don't know about you. You may not feel like you have everything, but 
But truth be told, I have everything I need. So what do you give people who have everything? And so that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. Jesus called his 12 disciples and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits, heal every disease and sickness. And you know, it's a little curious on the instructions, but he's trying to get the Jewish people straight first and then go on to us Gentiles, is that right? Okay. Um, so he said, don't go to the Gentiles or any of the town of the Samaritans. Rather, go to the lost sheep of Israel. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. And then he adds, freely you have received freely give. That's a motivation for all evangelism, all works of justice, all foreign missions. Freely you have received. <coughs> freely give. We have so much. That's the first thing we need to understand. We have so much. A visitor from the third world country came to the United States and was riding through a subdivision. And he noticed a car backing out of a garage. And he said in amazement, you even have houses for your cars. <laughs> and of course, we all remember Will Rogers. And he once said during the Great Depression, Will Rogers had seen so much poverty in all the parts of the world, said of America. We hold the distinction of being the only nation that ever went to the poorhouse in an automobile. <laughs> we are rich. That's why we need to listen closely to Jesus' words. Freely you have received. Freely give. <coughs> Motivational speaker Tony Robbins tells about something that occurred on a Thanksgiving day many years ago. For him, it was life-changing. A young boy woke up with a sense of foreboding. His family was in dire financial straits. They didn't have much to look forward to that Thanksgiving day, just a meager meal at best. They were too proud to ask for charity. This led to frustration and harsh words between his mother and father. The boy was devastated to watch his mom and dad become more and more angry and depressed over every passing hour. Suddenly there was a knock on the door, totally unexpected. Standing there was a tall man in rumpled clothing, grinning broadly, and carrying a huge basket. In the basket was a mound of good foods, a turkey, pies, Sweet potatoes, canned goods. And the man said to them, this is from someone who knows that you are in need and wants you to know that you are loved and cared for. The father tried to protest, but the man holding the basket said, I'm just a delivery person. Have a great Thanksgiving. In that brief encounter, says Tony, the young man's life has changed forever. The kindness that this man showed would never be forgotten by him. The young man vowed that someday he would do and repay the grand gesture. By the time this young man was 19, he began to fill out that promise. That Thanksgiving, with his own earnings, he set out to purchase groceries, not for himself, but for two families he knew that were like he had been in dire straits. When he arrived at the first house, he was greeted by a Latina woman. She had six children. Her husband had abandoned the family two days before. They had no food. You can imagine the pandemonium when the young man went to his car and started bringing in a turkey, stuffing, sweet potatoes, and canned goods 
all the stuff he had brought for this family. The children shrieked. The mother started exclaiming, you are a gift from God, you are a gift from God. And that said the young man, I'm just a delivery boy. This is a gift from a friend. The young man was sharing as he had been taught, as somebody had shared with him. You see, and this is a personal story of Tony Robbins himself. He was a boy with a stressed out family who received a Thanksgiving gift. And it turned him around so that he started doing the same thing. And because as a motivational speaker with astounding success, Tony Robbins started a foundation giving Thanksgiving baskets to hundreds of thousands of people over the years. Here's a motivation for good works. Freely you have received. Freely give. Of course, when Jesus spoke these words, he wasn't talking about financial blessings. He was talking about the spiritual blessings the disciples had received from him. His love, his grace, his peace. He was asking them to go out into the world to share the faith that had been nurtured in them. Pastor Daniel Wachowski talked about a coffee mug he found at a gift shop at an abbey. He said he paid a ridiculous price for it, but he bought it because of the inscription on the side of the mug. It read like this, God danced the day you were born. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are a gift of God, his own possession. You are a gift to all humankind, God's gift of love to them. The pastor figured, shoot, that's worth 11 bucks. And since then, he said, against all odds, I bought the most expensive coffee mug I've ever owned. But he claims that is now one of his most valuable possessions because it reminds him of the mission of Jesus. To share the message with every human being that they are loved, beautiful, a gift of God, a gift to humankind. You and I are loved by God. That makes us spiritually rich. We have treasures that we are not dependent on the stock market, the size of our bank account, or the resale of our house or condo. We are rich because we are loved. We are loved by other people, and we are loved by God. We are particularly mindful of our family relationships on special occasions, such as today, Father's Day. To know that we are loved is the greatest gift we can receive from a parent. But to know that our Heavenly Father loves us is the most wonderful gift of all. In 1997, a soldier in Jordan went on a rampage. He killed seven Israeli schoolgirls who were on a field trip to, get this, the island of peace, to park on the Jordan River between Israel and Jordan. Two of the girls were killed on the spot. The others were taken to a Jordanian hospital, but died later, some through mistreatment. In the midst of this anguish, anger, and alienation, Without warning, King Hussein, the king of the country where this crazed shooter lived, left his throne, left his palace, didn't tell the photographers or anyone where he was going. He just went. And he entered the homes of the seven girls. King Hussein, in all his majesty, grandeur, entered each of the modest homes and these grieving families and fell on his knees. 
he bowed down before them. In each home, he looked into the eyes of the mother, the father, the sister, the brothers, those who were grieving the loss of the young girl, and said, I beg you, forgive me. Your daughter is like my daughter. Your loss is my loss. May God hold, help you to bear up in the pain. And the king humbled before them, bowed, and then returned to his own country. This king, a Muslim king, gives us an image of what our relationship with Christ is. The God of the universe humbled himself and came into our world to show us how much we are loved. And now it's our job to show that love to others. Freely you have received, freely give. I remember this. 1995, Cal Ripken Jr. broke what many believe was an unbreakable record. Lou Gehrig's record for consecutive games played, 2,130. He's known as baseball's all-time Iron Man. Cal retired from baseball in 2001 after 21 seasons with the Orioles. His name appears in record books, most notably as one of only seven players to amass 400 home runs and 3,000 hits. Cal regularly gives credit to all his accomplishments from the teaching of his father, Cal Ripken Sr. The senior was a former baseball player, coach, and scout for the Orioles. In fact, in 1987 and 88, he was a manager for the Orioles. And both Cal Jr. and his brother Billy played for the team during that time. In 1996, Cal Ripken Sr. was inducted into the Orioles Hall of Fame. And Cal Jr. was asked to say a few words. He said it was an emotional moment, and the younger man tried to struggle with the words that he could say about his dad. Finally, he decided to tell a story about his own two children, Rachel, who was six, and her little brother, Ryan. He was three. They had been bickering for weeks, and one day Ripken heard Rachel turn to Ryan and said, you're just trying to be like daddy. After a few minutes, Cal said, Rachel, what's wrong with trying to be like Daddy? When he had finished telling this story, Junior looked at his father and said, that's what I've always tried to do. That's what Jesus expects of his disciples. He expects us to be like our dad. You didn't have a great dad. You had somebody to help. To be like our Heavenly Father, a Father who gave Himself completely for the world. Freely you have received, freely give. That's our challenge. So let's get on with it. Amen. Please stand as you're able. We will sing him 584. Lord, you give the great commission. We're singing verses 1, 2, and 5.
Two Judys that need prayer, both Judy Huffman and Judy Shannon, neither one are doing real well. Um, <clears throat> Tom Franklin was helicoptered to the hospital this week. Uh, he's in Fairfax. Uh, and over here, one of those him to go further. Now it was a mini stroke. Uh, he is supposed to be doing okay, and hopefully he will come home soon. Uh, and the good news is, Buck is home. Uh, he couldn't be here with us today, but he's doing much better. So during this week, just remember these people, and you may have other names yourself. Let us pray. Faithful and loving God, your grace makes our faith possible. May we live and go about our lives as people who place our trust in you. May we love and care for others as people who turn to you for help. Where there is doubt or distrust, <clears throat> renew our faith. 
Where there is fear or insecurity, grant us courage. Where there is fatigue and weariness, give us amazing strength. Where there is confusion of purpose, give us wisdom. Where there is sorrow or loss, bring us peace. And Lord, we pray for those of our family here who can't be with us today because of various causes, whether they are in a uh, care facility, uh, just ill, other problems. Lord, there are so many issues here. Understand that smoke from Canada is coming back. Uh, air conditioning is supposed to be orange today. We still have wars, political upheaval, health concerns, and so much more. So, Lord, be with us and make us mindful of those we know and love who need you. So let us pray for them and help where we can. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our ushers could come forward. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do have so much. We are blessed. Help us to love our neighbor and those around us. Help to be, us to be a community of faith. Bless these gifts and these givers and use all for your service. Amen. <laughs>
comments. Uh, I think I'll start with somebody mentioned one, and I heard another one today, but Nan and Jim just celebrated their 60th anniversary. <laughs> well, I found somebody who upped you because Linda and Bob just came back from vacation where they were celebrating their 62nd anniversary. <laughs> They had a good time. I just came back from the Virginia Conference. <laughs> uh, we got to meet the new bishop, and I'm really impressed by her. Uh, I think she's the woman for the time because all Methodist conferences are in stress right now, and she seems to be the person to handle it. I really enjoyed her sermon on Thursday morning. Her point was that we, as Christians, a lot of times we have these nice church buildings, and there we stay. That's not the case here, because we have nothing. We come here, and you all live in community. So she's basically asking us to do what you're already doing. But that's not the case everywhere, but like I say. So we are blessed, and... Uh, I don't know if you know or not, but we Methodist preachers are appointed one year at a time. Uh, if you remember Matt, he is now in Manassas, at Manassas St. Thomas, uh, which is a big church, and uh, it's the person that can do wonders there. So we're thankful for that. Jason and I are staying, so that's too bad for you all. But, uh, thank you for uh, no Sunday school today, it's Father's Day. Uh, Glad the Hunger Relief is next week. Uh, I was thinking about Father's Day, and my father was a very intelligent man. He didn't get it was a contest to see who would get their high school diploma first. Uh, I, I may have won, but that got his doctor. I am not the dumbest person in the world, but I'm going to tell you a story, and you'll know that God takes care of fathers when he can. Uh, I had a VSA motorcycle at the time, and I couldn't get it started. So we came up with this brilliant plan. Dad put a chain on the back of his Volkswagen and handed me the other end. And he would pull me, and when I got going fast enough, I would throw the chain away and the motorcycle would start. <laughs> well, we tried it twice and it didn't work, so he said, one more time. So he got it going, I had the chain, and I got up to about 25. And fortunately, we were in the church parking lot, which was great, okay? And I threw the chain, but not really. I threw the chain and it wrapped around the handlebars and <laughs> down we went. Fortunately, I was able to roll it up and was not hurt at all, not a scratch. God takes care of some of us when we are not at our most great. <laughs> but God obviously loves dads. And he loves you women too. Anyone who raises the children. Such an important job. Even if you never had children, I know many people who raise, help raise the family. Whether it's uncles, nieces, whatever. And that's what we're called to do. We're called to raise the children. Unfortunately, children are not being brought up in the church the way they used to be. There's not Sunday school anymore. BBS is still going on. We're, we're still trying, but COVID has just shattered so much at the church world. But here, in our community, we are to love our neighbors. I mean, people have come up to me and told me about different things that are going on in our community. You care. You love, and that's what God calls us to do. 
loving parents take care of children, grandchildren, and love our neighbors. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.